Please welcome from Stanford University, Max Schulacher. All right, wow, thanks for the uh, kind welcome. Uh, today, I am very excited to be speaking about how we can revolutionize information technology by achieving the next 1,000x gain in computing performance. Uh, electronics truly make the world go around. Uh, and with the exponentially growing availability of big, abundant data, uh, combined with, for instance, a trillion sensors, which will soon be connected to the Internet of Things or the cloud, uh, electronics can have a dramatic impact in our lives, with applications ranging from genomics for personalized healthcare uh, to the military, uh, to science and research, all the way to security. Yet, despite this promise, there is a major obstacle, which is that the computational demands for these future applications far outweigh the capabilities of electronics today. So without improving, without drastically improving the performance of electronics, these future applications will remain forever in the future. So how do we improve computers today? Well, on one hand, we try and make a better switch, a better, newer transistor. Uh, while this is important work, uh, there are two huge problems with this. First, for many of these new technologies, we can't even build them yet. They only exist on paper. And this is obviously a major obstacle when a chip today can require over one billion with a B transistors. And secondly, even if, and this is so important, even if, you could give me the best possible transistor in the entire world, I would still only be able to speed up these future abundant data applications by a maximum of only 10%, as the device inefficiencies themselves only account for a very small portion of the total system inefficiencies. So a second separate way we try and make a better computer is by inventing new computer architectures, uh, such as multiprocessing cores or uh, specialized accelerators. Yet this, too, also has major drawbacks. Uh, there are only a limited number of design tricks we can play, and we've played all the easy ones already. So we're quickly reaching a regime of diminishing returns. So the question is, how can we reach this target of achieving more than 1,000x gains in computing performance? Because such massive gains are required if we want to enable some truly awesome applications such as turning the cell phone in your pockets into your own personalized doctor, lawyers, nutritionists, financial advisors, etc. Well, the answer lies in realizing new nanosystems, which is when we take emerging nanotechnologies, which enable new devices, new fabrication techniques, new types of sensors, etc., and only by overcoming questions such as imperfections can we then combine all these benefits in order to realize revolutionary system architectures, which in turn enable us to realize a whole new class of abundant data applications. Now, while each sphere of work is still important in its own right, it is only by combining the right emerging nanotechnologies with the right system architectures for the right class of applications, which allow us to achieve these massive benefits. Now, admittedly, this is abstract so far, so let me give you a very concrete example. This is what a boring two-dimensional computer chip looks like today. And this is a new three-dimensional nanosystem, which has multiple layers of computing logic built directly on top of one another with interleaving layers of memory storage with ultra-dense vertical connections connecting these multiple layers, truly embodying computation finely immersed in memory. And I want to highlight for you that such a chip would be impossible to build with not only today's technologies, but more importantly, with today's conventional thinking and approaches. So how can we can build such a 3D chip today? Well, the key to enabling such new system architectures lies in leveraging new nanotechnologies. For logic, we can use carbon nanotubes, which are rolled up sheets of graphene and can form very high performance transistors. For the layers of memory, we can use emerging memory technologies. And due to the unique fabrication of these new technologies, we can build them directly on top of one another, allowing us to connect layers of logic and memory with ultra-dense vertical wires. 
And thus, it is the combination of these new, new uh, nanotechnologies coupled with the new system architectures, which these new technologies naturally enable, which allows us to achieve this massive 1,000x gain in computing performance. Now, I want to leave you with the most important message of this talk, which is that nanosystems are not just dreams or pretty pictures in a PowerPoint, but we can build them today in our labs. I'm very excited to show you the world premiere of our latest and most advanced nanosystem, 3D SmartSense, which has interwoven sensing, memory, and computation. On the top layer of 3D SmartSense, we build over 1 million sensors built from carbon nanotubes. And in this instance, these are gas sensors. These sensors feed their data directly into a layer of memory built directly underneath, which is then computed on with a layer of logic, which is built directly underneath that. And due to the ultra-dense integration between sensing, memory, and logic, 3D SmartSense can capture an astonishing terabytes worth of information every second from the outside world and output useful information, such as extensive and accurate classification on what gases 3D SmartSense smells in the atmosphere. With that, I hope I've been able to show you the combination of nanosystems, this powerful combination of being both promising and realistic as we can build them in our labs today. And so I hope that the impact of nanosystems in our lives will only continue to grow. Uh, thank you all for your very kind attention.